President Obama's Christianity, the National Prayer Breakfast, Part 11. We have been addressing the President's National Prayer Breakfast speech, and we continue with the next section wherein the President states, and I quote, and today, with as many challenges as we face, these are the values I believe we're going to have to return to in the hopes that God will buttress our efforts, unquote. Again, what are the president's values? He says that we have to return to them and hope that God will buttress our efforts. Well, this is Protestant speak or religious speak, which sounds very nice and is almost biblical. But its intent is to use words that sound correct religiously, but are really redefined as to their meaning. The president wants us to return to values, but they are not the values of the Founding Father. Not at all. But yet, he speaks of them as being values that have been held to in this nation. Well, the president also noted, and I quote, now we can earnestly seek to see these values lived out in our politics and our policies. And we can earnestly disagree on the best way to achieve these values. In the words of C.S. Lewis, Christianity has not and does not profess to have a detailed political program. It is meant for all men at all times, and the particular program which suited one place or time would not suit another." Unquote. Well, Mr. President, first, let me just simply say, C.S. Lewis isn't the person I'd be quoting when it comes to a Christian analysis of political theory. And Christianity, while it doesn't describe exactly what system of government is the only accepted system of government, the Bible does, in Romans 13, tell us what government must achieve for good in order to be a legitimate government and what it must not do. For if it does, it is no longer an authority appointed by God. But I'll give you this. The speech writer, whoever he is for the president, has done his research well. And the president is telling us that these Christian values need to be lived out, established by law. Did you hear that, Mr. Atheist, Mr. Agnostic, Mr. Liberal? The Christian values, the values of the Bible he's speaking about, need to be lived out in everyone's life. Thus, wherein all end, therefore, at the same point. No matter how we achieve that result, we all must arrive together. We are to live out our politics and policies based on these values, he said. Now, uh, granted, they're generalized and not even specifically spelled out, and I believe that's for a reason. But take heart, there is place for earnest disagreement, at least according to, the, to Mr. President, on what is the best way to achieve these values as our standard of life. But it must be these values, he said that are being instituted in our politics and in our policies. This is a dominion theocratic statement about world achievement in that the right values, and for the president in this context, he means having the right theology and philosophy to be put in place within the context of all these debates that are going on, in the politics and policies that are being considered. My friends, he's talking theocracy in its underlying form. This is a theocratic, dominion-oriented president. But what mandate and what theology is driving this president? to state that we must return to what he perceives as our nation's 
Well, former values in his perspective, but I doubt that these are the values of the Founding Father. He has told us that America is not a Christian nation already, but what does he mean then that these are the values of our nation based on biblical statements? Are they universal values? Where have we ever seen universal values in our world? Such values are not even found in the Star Trek series. This is utopianism arising out of his liberation theology. It comes very close to the concept of my personal views in the sense that I believe that there is to be a kingdom of God on earth, the kingdom of Jesus Christ that that kingdom will grow through the preaching of the gospel and we will conquer nations and people will submit to the authority of the king of that kingdom and that kingdom will cover the earth and then Christ will come and we will have an established rule of life for all those who obey him well this president is preaching the same subject but not with the same content but make no doubt about it. As you will see in this series, he's teaching theocratic dominion theology. Well, the president also noted, quote, our goal should not be to declare our policies as biblical. It is God who is infallible, not us, unquote. Here the president has revealed both his theology and his ignorance. Note carefully that he states, Quote, our goal should not be to declare our policies as biblical, unquote. Okay, Mr. President, we are not to have biblical policies because, well, here's the rationale. It is God who is infallible, not us. Mr. President, if the Bible is from God, and you're quoting it as being God's book, by implication you're saying that it is not, nevertheless, infallible and thereby the author of it cannot be fallible. If the Bible is from God, is it not then the book of infallibility? If the Bible is not infallible, then Mr. President, you are saying that it is not from God, but from men. Therefore, the Bible cannot be trusted, only God can. And so far, he hasn't really spoken to our issues today, has he? So we must trust our values as the universal good of all mankind. Liberalism. Why am I not surprised? Mr. President, you keep quoting the Bible and then say the Bible shouldn't be our standard. That's a logical fallacy. But it sounds good. But it's pure liberalism. It's religious speak and no one if they're really listening to you if they really understand what you're saying in your speeches should be surprised at all